Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. You know, for the last two days, I've been beating my typewriter trying to think of a way to let you in on our adventure without spoiling the plot. But after using up several reams of paper, I find that it just isn't possible. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to tell you a thing, except that this is Let George Do It. And if you like to root for the underdog, you better start pulling for old George. Dear Mr. Valentine, that ad of yours gets me. No job too tough for you to handle. <laughs> well, I don't believe it. I got a tiger I'll bet you can't handle. Yeah, you read it right, a tiger. So unless you're just whistling in the wind, stick her on your office tonight. Meet me around 7.30. I got a wife and kids to worry about, so don't fail me. Signed, Jerry Briskin. Sign Jerry Briskin. 7.30. No, around 7.30. Uh-huh. How many stripes on a tiger? 40, George. He's only 40 minutes late. That's not so bad. Probably hired Frank Buck instead. We make a lot of sense, too, don't we? Huh? Want to play gin rummy? Oh, why is it, Brooksy? We never get letters that tell anything. He's got a case. Why doesn't he say so? Change his mind, maybe. Who knows? Jerry Briskin. Want to bet he never even shows up tonight? Um, $5. I'll bet $5. Give me that phone. Hello? Valentine, is Briskin. You're late. I just want to make sure you're still in the office. I got held up. Couldn't get into your building because of the crowds. Slow down, will you? What What crowds? Hey, look, just sit tight, will you? I'll be right there. Honest, I will. Sure, sure. Bring your tiger, too. But what's this oh, about... Oh, just a crowd. I don't know. Something going on. Police and everything. But I'll come around the back way. Hey, look, Briskin, you... Well, you owe me five dollars, don't you? Not yet, I don't. What are you going to do? Jump out the window to avoid paying me? Oh, George, what's going on? I don't know. The street seems to be roped off down there. There are no fire engines. Yes, or... there is. One small one. See it? Yeah. And they got a searchlight pointed at the door. What in the name of... Brooksy, Brooksy, look. Around there to the right. It's a woman on the ledge. She's the one who screamed, George. That's not all she's doing. Hey, look at the way she wobbles. They've got her in the searchlight. She's gonna... Here, maybe she can hear us from here. Hey. Hey, lady. Still 10 or 15 feet away. Lady, can you hear me? I'm over here. Hey, look, this way, will you? Oh, did George, she sees you. She stopped moving. Shh, shh. Yeah, hello there. Now, look, uh, keep your eyes on me, lady. Don't mind all that noise down there. Now, keep your eyes on me and just keep moving toward me. It's all right. It's all right. The ledge is wide enough for you to get no, here. No, no, no. George, she wants to jump. She wants to kill herself. Look, look, lady. Nothing can be as bad as this cold wind up here. Now, come on. Easy does it. Don't come near me. Oh, George, what can we do? I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm not scared. Oh, brother, Looney is a coot. Oh, listen. People are coming out in the hall. Yeah, and it's liable to scare her, too. What are you talking about? I've walked all the way around the building. Do you know that? I bet you would be afraid to do that, wouldn't you? No. No, I don't think so. George, what are you doing? Get back in here. I don't get dizzy very easy. But I'm probably not as clever as you are. Oh, George, please. Are you coming to walk with me? Yeah. Yeah, sure, that's it. A little stroll in the park. I've never been dizzy. There's nothing to this, see? Look out, lady. Uh, don't have to hold me. My, you're good looking, too, aren't you? Only... Only... Now, it's all right, lady. Those are just firemen to the rescue in my office, that's all. Come on, now. Easy does it. Yes. Just another step. Only I feel so... Hey, look. I, I, I got you. Oh, lady, what a time to faint. Hurry up, George. Here, I... I can help you. I got her, all right. That's it, boys. Get it. Get that picture. Photographers. Hey, clear out of here, you guys. This all is right, no time to... a little higher, will you? That's it. Huh? Higher. Where have I heard your voice before? Come on, Buster, give me a hand My name this. is Briskin here. Now remember, boys, when you write captions, call her the Tigress of the Trapeze, world's greatest aerialist. World's great... Hey, what in the name of I heaven... I told you I wasn't scared. 
Were you, darling? Ah. No, no, don't drop me. Hold me tighter. That's it. <laughs> the lady fainted. <laughs> Publicity. So that's it. Why, you That's dirty... it, that's it. Get it, boys. Get him to get the expression on his face. Ah! Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> and thank you, Phyllis Fosdick. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. Now back to George Valentine and our Let George Do It adventure. Oh, now let me go, Valentine. Let go, I said. She got plenty of money. hundred ain't enough for you. Okay, we'll make it two. It's worth it. Press agent, 5,000 bucks. Couldn't stop me oh, from stop doing... Oh, stop it, I said. I got a wife and kids. Oh, you shut up. It's a job, that's all. I got rid of them all, George. She went down to buy all the photographers a drink. Oh, she did. Bully for her. Now, look, Valentine, you can't sue her. You just get laughed at. Buster for two okay, cents. Okay, okay, so you look a little silly in a few front pages. It's publicity, ain't it? And for you, too. She's pulled that stunt in every city she's played. You mean you pick a sucker in every no, town? No, no, and then... no, no. To walk around the building, it's a... You were something extra. Oh, come on. How could I resist that silly ad of yours? <laughs> hey, how about the faint she pulled, huh? Oh, I tell you, she's a great little artist. Briskin, that silly face of yours. All right, is about all right, to be... pay you two fifty. Will you cut it out? Ah. Wow. Brooksy, I thought you said you got rid of everybody. I am here, yeah. But I wait. Well, let me go. Go on, friend. Beat it. I wait to see you. You hold her. Huh? I follow. I am here. I see everything. Who are you? A man going crazy. Beat it, you big moose. The party's over. Go on, get out of here. Get lost. Hold it, hold it. Uh, Hello. Your name's Fedor, isn't it? Yeah. Leave us alone. I see how this man hold her. What in the name of heaven? Wait a minute, Fedor's a husband, I think. Third or fourth. It's living fast. Well, 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 husband. Another tiger, I suppose. Well, uh, look, Fedor, just shut the door quietly and don't get your tail pinched as you leave. George! Mm. Oh, upset about something, aren't you, Fedor? I traveled 200 miles to get here. Who are you? You said that before. Never mind what... Ah, jealous, is that it? Didn't like the way I held it. I can see. I have heard the talk. Who are you? It was you? his idea, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This guy, this, this uh, Jerry Briskin. He and your wife are just like that. Who? <laughs> Probably her lover, for all I know. So long, everybody. No, wait, wait. Fado, I'm, I'm very pleased to meet you. I mean, well, I, I got a wife and kids, you understand? I'm your wife's new press agent, that's all. Keep talking, sucker. I do not understand. Neither do I, big man, but then I only met your wife tonight when he brought her here. So, you, you know how these things are. Talk it over with him. Uh, him? But it's... That's good right. time. Valentine, this guy had an accident once. If, if, Fedor, my name is Briskin, our new press agent. That's uh, all I... Look out! Uh, oh! uh, George, stop hey, 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 Cut I it out. Wait a minute. I I cut it out, you guys. You crazy big baboon. <laughs> What's the idea? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Leave me alone. Leave you alone? What about me? He is the one. You said he is the one, he and my wife. Oh, well, it wasn't true. He just made it up. I don't know anything about your wife or about this guy who deserved to get kicked around a little, so who cares? Or for that matter, about any of this cockeyed business. I am sorry, I said. I am so tired, I travel all day. I make fool of myself, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, uh, good night. Valentine Fader's her husband, Estella's husband. That's her name, Estella. Only had an accident a couple of months ago. That's as I understand it. Yeah. I am strongest man in circus. Uh-huh. Only you got dropped on the head. Oh, be careful, George. Look, he's been in a hospital. Hasn't been with a circus. Look, look, look. I don't care who's been where. Now, get out. Get out, both of you. Please. Please, uh... I love her. She's my wife. All right, sure, that's great, that's fine. Every man to his own mistake. On the telephone, she says she's too busy to see me. 
She is my wife. Well, take it up with Dorothy Dix. And now you say that Fado, this Fado, man... we've been through that. He told you it wasn't true. It's not me. I'm a press agent, not her partner. Her partner? So? Oh, now look, both of you. Be Would quiet. You please... She work with partner now. Is that true? There is partner. Look, will you just leave me out of it, Fedor? I work for a living. No, tell me. Get your hands off him. What do I have to do? Point a gun at you two to get you out of here? Okay, Valentine, we'll leave. I'll, I'll go first. No. No, not yet. Okay, if you guys think I'm kidding. No, 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 please. You, you, you don't have to threaten. I'm sorry. It is lonely in hospital. I'm all confused. I need help. The man's bored with your story, Fader. So long, Valentina. I'll send you a check in the morning. Wait, I say. Mr. Valentine, you don't have to get behind your desk like that. I don't, huh? I don't know what to do, but it would be easier with gun. Oh, watch him, watch him. Hey, hey, get away. Right off, cut it out, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Easier with gun. Yeah. Thank you. Goodbye. Put that gun back here before I... Holy, holy smoke. There is a lover, you know, and fate has got your gun. Now look what you started. Look what I started. What did you say? Well, somebody's liable to get murdered. Well, brother, I should have finished this part of it earlier, shouldn't I? <laughs> All right, Brooksy, don't look at me like that. First a sucker, then a sourpuss. I know, I know. I just don't like being thrown into the middle of a three-ring circus, that's all. Not with all the animals running loose. You are listening to Let George Do It. Our adventure will continue in just a moment. A press agent named Jerry Briskin gets you mixed up with a woman named Estella, tigress of the trapeze, world's greatest aerialist. Yes, if you happen to be George Valentine, and sometimes you wish you weren't, you're picked for a sucker in a publicity stunt. The only trouble is you can't get out of it because the tigress has a mate, and he has your gun. Well, it isn't the price of a gun that bothers you. It's the thought that you may never get it back because sooner or later it may be tied up as Exhibit A in a murder case. And so you decide you'd better find out about the corpse elect. Who it might be, for instance. All right, this way, ladies and gents. See the girly girly show. Her partner, right? Huh? Ask Estella herself. She'll tell you who her boyfriend is. Today's boyfriend. Quite a man-eating tiger, that girl. She's doing her act over in the main tent, huh? Yeah, great performer, lady. Great. What's the name of this partner? Uh, uh, Stella, she's got nerves like iron. <laughs> a picture of her walking around the outside of a building in the newspaper. You see that? What's the matter, Mike? You got nausea or something? It makes him dizzy just to think about it. Just tell us where we can find this partner of hers. Well, he's busy catching her naturally. That's the act. That's always been a right. Three flips and she lands in his arms. A lucky stiff king for a day. Hey, right this way, gents. See him shimmy and shake. His name's Ferelli. Flying Ferelli. Flying Ferelli? Bah, couldn't fly a kite. Sixty dollar a week bum, but big and good looking. All her assistants have been bums. She's the act, top number in the business. But I could tell you a lot better if I could look in your tea leaves. Oh, you're doing fine, thanks. Circus must be a small world. There's something in store for you, dearie. What could it be? Just give me a chance to read your... 
Well, ain't that pretty? Yeah, lettuce leaf, nice and green. And so easy to read, too. Mister, Fedor, he was one of her assistants once. Big, stupid thing. Always jealous like that. But a bark don't mean a bite. Her husbands don't last long, huh? Well, nothing happens to them, if that's what you mean. Fedor's the only one got dropped on his head. Yeah, and about that time, she was getting sick of my bet. George, what are you driving at? Oh, it was an accident to Fedor, all right. You don't catch me gossiping about my dearest friends. No, I'm sure. You, uh, worried about something happening? Why don't you wait outside the big tent for Stella herself? Or go over there in that palace she calls a dressing trailer? I can tell from the music she'll be on in a minute. I'm not that worried, thanks. Oh, don't want to get uh, mixed up yourself, huh? <laughs> uh, she won't even see Fedor now. All through with him. So he won't come out here hanging around too close. I know he won't. Okay, thanks, lady. You fill me in. How do you know it? What's to stop him? Who reads the tea leaves? You or me? Neither one of us. The cops I already sent for. She's got. Yeah. Even wears a tiger skin. Yeah. Not much of it. Uh, George, what did you mean back there asking people about Fedor as though you thought his accident was... Nothing. Nothing, Angel. I won't question his accident. And I think he's ugly, too. But when you throw away all the trimmings, this is nothing but a love triangle. Check? Well, nobody will thank us for interfering. Yeah, not even Briskin. And he's on the outside. But you know, sometimes in a triangle, Brooksy, the guy who looks like a villain is really the one who's liable to come out on the short end. Oh, here we are. Come on. Well, she's not even through taking bows yet. Look at her. Blowing kisses Never like... Never mind. A... We'll do without... Uh-oh. Here he comes. Oh, the other part of the triangle. Yeah. He doesn't stay for the applause, I guess. Uh-huh. Kind of in a hurry, too. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Ferrelli. Hey, sorry, no time now. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, sorry. But I want to talk I'm to sorry. you. I'm sorry. What on earth? Now he's running, George. Got out fast, didn't he? Looked like he'd seen a ghost. Say, maybe there is something brewing George, out here. George, behind you! Look out! Oh, no. Ooh. Ooh. So I get the gun back after all. Over the head. It was Fedor, George. Oh. You were in the way and he I went... heard you, I heard you. I'm so happy you can hear. You can join the party. Who let you in, Lieutenant Johnson? I let myself in. George, Fedor didn't drop the gun. He, he just hit <sighs> you and kept on running. He was chasing Ferrelli. Uh. You send for cops to find a big homicidal nut running around loose. So who has to do the work? Me, naturally. Hey, hey, one at a time, will you? What do you mean? You got him? Yeah, yeah, just this second. One of the boys reported. What happened? George, what happened? was murder. Murder? Well, I had to take care of you first, naturally, and so I stayed with you. And you were here in the infirmary when I saw Lieutenant Johnson, maybe half hour later. Sure, sure, but... Ah. Oh, he caught him, huh? Simple as that. Fedor shoved me out of the way and went after Ferrelli and got him. And now you've caught Fedor. George, it's not that simple. I mean, it's Estella who's been murdered. sir. Through the gate. What's over there? Elephant, sir. Oh. Where's Estella's body? It's not out here in the dark. Back in the trailer, George. Your dressing room. Hold it. I'll tell you later. Well, well, look who's here. The moose. Yeah, Fedor's not saying much, sir. He can't. Neither one of them can. Neither one of them? Sure. Ferrelli, too. Apparently, he came skinning over the wall in the dark and Fedor after him. All right. Come on. Come on. Get on your feet. Yeah. Give me your flesh. This on. is very interesting, Valentine. Estella was struck over the head with a blunt instrument five minutes after you were. Boy always brings her coffee right after her act, and there she was. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Look at these two guys. Ooh, pretty bloody. That's how we found them. 
Guard heard the shot. Grace Fedor's leg. They were fighting over the gun. They were fighting, period. Husband and lover. Sure, sure, fighting. Still at it a few minutes ago. Well, what's the matter, Valentine? Don't you get it? Yeah. Yeah, I get it all right, Johnson. And it isn't simple at all. Fedor was chasing Ferrelli five minutes before Estella died. Now, later on, we find they've practically been killing each other. So how could either one of them have killed Estella? Please, boys, no pictures, I said. No pictures. It isn't good for the circus. What's the matter, Briskin? For once, you don't want publicity for the tiger? Look, stop it, will you? I got a wife and kids. Get your pictures later, boys. Let's get in here. Okay. Uh, sure. Quite a night, huh, Valentine? You should know. You started it. Is this where she was found, Johnson? Yeah. Okay, Sergeant, you can let those punching bags sit down. Now, wait a minute, somebody. I'd like to say something. Well, it speaks. Make it snappy, Ferrelli. He... He wasn't with me all the time. Huh? What's that? No, you see, I spotted him in the big tent at the end of the show. You see, one of the clowns, he told me that the Fedor just found out about who I was and everything. Anyway, I see him come after me. I know what kind of a guy he was from Estella, but he don't catch me. I mean... Well, I run, but it was not until 10 or 15 minutes later that he caught up with so me. So you weren't together when she was killed? Now we're getting someplace. You're a real nice guy, aren't you, Ferrelli? Huh? Now you listen to me. You ran and then you skinned over a high fence to hide in that elephant enclosure. In the dark. And in the dark, he wasn't following you. But somehow, later on, he just managed to find you anyway. Lucky, maybe. Oh, uh, well, I mean, he must have a... W well, you see no, me... No, 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 not that simple. A couple of nice guys. You want to try to hang it on him now, Fader? <laughs> I do not understand. Hey, this rumble gone over yet? For fingerprints, sure. No prints. That's not what I meant, Johnson. The drawer and this bureau sticks. Uh, let me see. I can do it all right. All please. right, so it sticks. It's been shoved in too far. That's what I mean. Been slammed in. Somebody in a hurry, wondering what's inside. <laughs> Nothing. Jewelry. Where's jewelry? What's that? Jewelry. Bracelets around the neck and things. I'm her husband. I know that. Everybody knows that. Jewelry, huh? Pretty wealthy, wasn't she? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute, you guys. The stuff is in there. Whoever killed her must have taken it. I mean, that's why she was killed. Holy smoke, that spreads this case wide open. A robbery killing? I don't believe it. Oh, why not? Means lots of people could have done it. If these two guys were really fighting at the time, and anyway... you've got a wife and kids to worry about. What? What's the matter, Briskin? I make you nervous? Press agent. But you really admired that Estella, didn't you? What's... What? Now, oh, wait a oh, minute. Oh, skip it. If this wasn't a robbery killing, then it was a real cold-blooded murder. Gloves so there'd be no fingerprints. Something stolen to make it look like robbery. But then it'd rule out the hotheads over here, too. Neither one of them was in the mood to be cold-blooded, even if they hadn't been together at the time. A while ago, I said it was a triangle, and I still stick with it. All right, Fedor, your wife was going to throw you over, wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah, she was very wealthy, a lot more than just jewelry. Yeah, but i never seen any of it. Ferrelli, you were the current boyfriend. But if you had half a brain, you could see the handwriting on the wall. Even if you became the next husband, you wouldn't have lasted very long either. Nobody does. And you wouldn't have seen any of the fortune either. You can say that again. Valentine, what in the I'm name of... I'm trying to Peter? play a different tune on the triangle, that's all, Johnson. Okay, Ferrelli, let's get back to how Fedor found you in the dark. Why you tried hiding from this monster in a place where nobody could even hear your call for help. But I don't know he was so close. I don't know he could see me go over the fence. Then how did he know you did? How did he know where to find you? But I did see him. I was right behind him. Oh, no, he don't. Oh, well, Wait. No, come on, come on. Make up your minds, boys. No, no, listen to me. The Triangle Club. The two sides of it nobody ever suspects. You two deliberately messed each other up to make everything stick. Two sides? But I hate him. He tried to kill me. Husband and lover against the wife. There's one for you, Johnson. You better find out fast who inherits that dough those guys couldn't have got their hands on any other way. We didn't. This is stupid guy. He don't mean what he... He's a dumb man. You fake or you make a critic. Shut stupid. up and get your hands off me. That's it, boys. Go at it again. Sure, he's so dumb he said you did it. I did not. He did. Shut up, Lothmar. He said you did the actual killing. He did it himself. Oh, I... Look out. Get him off. Hey. 
Well, throw up a chair, Johnson. We got a ringside seat. So we'll just wait for a decision. Back to the conclusion of our Let George Do It adventure in just a moment. Then it was really Fedor who killed Estella. Yeah. Oh, boy, oh, boy, what a fight. If only I'd had a camera. <laughs> oh, both of them were guilty, Angel. They cooked it up together. Well, might not have happened if Mr. Briskin here... Had... Oh, yes, it would have. The publicity stunt didn't have anything to do with it. Sure, just a neat twist that they'd figured on a triangle. Yeah, and it might have worked. They might have got away with it if our friend here hadn't picked me for a sucker. Got us mixed up in it. Sure, that's right. So you're not so anymore, are you? Holy smoke, it's a job, that's all. I got a wife and kids oh. to... Oh, Buster, you're a broken record. My wife and kids, my wife and kids, my wife and George kids. George Valentine, you stop it. Huh? Well, it's just a shame you don't say anything intelligent like that once in a while. <laughs> What's the matter, darling? Your cat got your tongue? You have just heard Tune on a Triangle, another Let George Do It adventure. Robert Bailey was starred as George Valentine, with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. David Victor and Jackson Gillis wrote the story, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Now this is yours truly, inviting you to another visit with Valentine, when you will again hear what happens when you let George do it. <laughs> 